Cash is king. I'm not going to tell you how much I always carry with me or, or where it is, <laughs> but in case of disaster, cash is king. Just my example with the Walgreens. And you want, I mean, I, I don't know what everybody's economy is, but if you've got to get out of Dodge, you want a minimum of $500 or $1,000 to see you through. Because you get, they may charge $50 a gallon for gas or who knows what. So you want cash, as much as you can afford to carry comfortably. You want quarters. Those old landline telephones, I occasionally see one, take quarters. Vending machines may or may not work. If they're the old fashioned ones that aren't really electric, they may work. So you want a couple of rolls of quarters. You want to make sure you have the keys to your bank box. Not just the one in your house, but if you have one in a bank. You should, I always keep a few extra things in my bank box in addition to the coins. Just a really good investment to have. Uh, rolls of silver. Uh, many people here may have never seen a silver coin. We used to have silver coins in this country. And they're one ounce silver coins, they're Morgan silver dollars, or etc. And they're worth about 14 bucks a pop today. If something bad really happens, if the currency collapses, and people, many don't realize that our currency has lost 97% of its value since inception in 1913. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. The US dollar has lost 97% of its value since 1913 when the Federal Reserve Bank was established. An ounce of gold back then, or a hundred years prior to that, or a thousand years prior to that, could buy a fine man's suit of clothes, or a cow, things like that, or I think it was 17 to 50 ounces, 50 ounces of silver, I believe it is. Today, those ratios exist. Gold is, call it $935, $950 an ounce. You can pretty much buy a fine man's suit today, you know, a cow, basic things. So it might be worth putting a little bit of precious metal, whether it's gold or silver, into your portfolio. And border guards forever have been bribed with gold and silver. Remember that. Fifth, food and water. As I mentioned earlier, people can live for three days without water. You'll have one half of a headache due to dehydration and three weeks without food. It's very important to think about it now. So, and there are a couple of things to think about differently. If you're hunkering down if you're, or staying in your location, you may want to investigate planting a garden in case food supplies are interrupted. You may want to plant an orchard, learn something about canning. Uh, every time you go shopping, buy a few extra cans or boxes of non-perishable food and store them in a cool, dry place that won't get wet if you have a flood. That's important. A lot of people just store things in the basement. You don't want it in a place where it'll get wet in case of flooding. Have a well, stream, pool, pond, or whatever on your property. The key is on your property. We used the stream for our water during uh, the ice storm. And if you don't live somewhere where you can do that, consider moving. That way you are dependent upon yourself instead of dependent upon the, uh, the guys in the water treatment plant. I've lived in Latin America. I've chased down water trucks on the highway and waved a 20 bill $20 bill at them to get them to come to my house. Hopefully it won't come to that, but that's how it is in Ecuador today. They have very bad water supplies. Learn about water purification. Stomach problems are nasty. Plain, unscented household bleach is an amazing water purification tool. One capful will clean or sterilize a 55-gallon drum of water. 
I taught people in the country of Ecuador and Vietnam how to use that, and their infant, infant uh, death rates dropped. Iodine is also a great product for water disinfection. Think about it today. You never know what's going to happen to your water treatment plant. Freeze-dried food, food storage, mountain home food, fantastic, good flavors, easy to prepare, come in boxes, last 25 years. Look at into mountain home food, uh, meals ready to eat, that's what the soldiers uh, eat, good stuff, lasts a long time. Water purification, it's a company called Mountain Research, makes a beautiful little flashlight sized device that creates an antioxidant. You pour it into your canteen, shake it up, let it sit, kills Giardia, Cryptosporidium, all those nasty things that are going to make your trial even worse. And if you are suffering from whatever disaster and you get dysentery at the same time, it's going to be terrible. So please think about water purification. We have also a big Berkey thing in our house. It's a big thing like this with carbon filters. Look it up online. Big Berkey. It's really cool. Um, very important, hand washing. You don't want that stomach upset. Keep those hands clean. Uh, hunting and fishing, always good to supplement your food supply. A gas grill, great way to cook, or charcoal or whatever. Just think though, don't cook upwind from hungry, desperate people. If they smell the aroma of your steak floating down into their neighborhood, you may have brought some unnecessary problems upon yourself. And here's a really nice little tip. If you have a hot water heater in your house, you may have 40 gallons of water in there. So during desperate times, you can tap that for 40 gallons of fresh water. How many people here knew that ahead of time? Okay, so about half, a little less than half of you are a good group. So for the rest of you, don't panic. You're not going to you know, dehydrate right away. There's 40 extra gallons of water in your house that you may not have thought of. If you have to evacuate, there are some fantastic portable water purification systems out there. The prices are dropping. Go to a camping store. They're fantastic. You want non-perishable, high-energy content foods, uh, candies, chocolates, granolas, gorp, all that, that stuff that you know about. Uh, cutlery, optional food if you don't, if you lost your knife or fork or whatever. You know, it's kind of tough to cut up big steaks with your fingers. So you want it moist in case you're low on water. You don't want to have to require a lot of water to drink with it. It'll be choking on your food. Vitamins in my kit, some people believe in them, some don't. Uh, that mountain house food, the meals ready to eat, fantastic. A canteen or a bottle, you can buy an army surplus, cheap, everyone has these water bottles. Purification, there are also tablets for purification and little bottles of iodine. I, I, I have to stress it, you, you want to, you really want to pay attention to the water that you're drinking. And if our water treatment facilities go down for whatever reason, bacteria can grow pretty quickly.